Hello, everyone. Uh, we are happy to welcome you to the GMAT online seminar where you can learn all about the exam and get useful tips on how to successfully complete it. My name is Anna and I will be your moderator today. Uh, now I will talk a bit about the structure of today's session. Uh, first, we are going to hear Matt Jensen, the Director of International Student Recruitment and Admissions here at Corvinus University of Budapest. He will give us a brief introduction to the webinar. Then, Sara Strafino, the Director of Market Development of GMAP, Graduate Management Admission Council, will talk us through the process of GMAT exam itself. Uh, GMAC is the organization that administers this exam, so she is uh, the person you would want to hear from. And uh, also, feel free to ask us any questions in the comment section, because at the end of this webinar, our speakers will try their best to answer all of your questions. And now I'm going to give the word to Matt, and he will give us a brief introduction to the online session. Thanks, Anna. It's great to see you as well back at the university. I, I know you're studying still, uh, but it's nice to see you. And thanks for helping today. So as Anna said, I'm Matt. It's nice to, to be meeting or to, to be presenting to you all today. I am the Director of International Student Recruitment and Admissions at Corvinus. So there'll be a, a heavy focus on the international process. But I know that many of you joining today are also Hungarian applicants. Uh, so we've included the, the key deadlines and the slight differences of your Hungarian applicant applying through Felvi uh, Pontu as, as well. So we also have a mixture of people who've already applied to us, uh, some people who might be hearing about Corvinus for the first time. Of course, uh, these videos will be on, on YouTube and Facebook. So we have just a little bit about the university to start. So some of you might not already know this. Uh, some of you might find out some new pieces of information, and to others, it could be com completely new. So I'll just quickly go through some, some really, really nice features of the university and, and uh, some of the benefits of studying with us. In total, Corvinus is a medium-sized university, so we have just over 11,000 students, and around 15%, almost 2,000 of our students are international. Uh, we offer programs in Hungarian and in English. And if you study in an English language program, your, your class could be 50, 60, even 70% international. OK, so you're going to be meeting lots of people, whether you're Hungarian or you're an international student from all over the world, if you choose to study an English language program at Corvinus. And you can see here our students come from more than 80 different countries, I'm sure. Uh, if you look at the, the people posting already some, some questions and comments, you'll see different names from, from all over the world. So that's, that's, that's great. The, the university is a specialist in three subject areas. So I said we're a medium-sized university. That's because we don't have a faculty of engineering or a faculty of medicine. We have three key areas, uh, which is business and management economics and social sciences and if you look at the world rankings by subject you'll see that Corvinus is is the outstanding university in Hungary in these subject areas so you can see we're top 300 to 350 in the world in the latest QS world rankings for business and management so what you'll find if you study if you're interested in these subjects uh, you'll find that studying at Corvinus gives you one of the the best bang for buck uh, quality of, of education in English that, that you can find anywhere in the world. And that's that's why I chose to work at the university, actually. I'm, I'm from the UK. I've been in Hungary since 2020. And I really believe in, in what the university is offering to the international students. But it's a, a great offer for, for Hungarian students as well. We're also accredited by AMBA and AACSB. We're the only university in Hungary to have both of those accreditations. If you don't know what the, these mean, please go and do some research. You'll see that only 2% of business institutions in the world have both of those accreditations. So it's an outstanding thing to have on your diploma. When you graduate, employers know the value of this. It means that you will have a, a higher quality, a, higher, a more regulated education at Corvinus that employers value. So that in, ex in itself builds up your skills. Uh, but then, of course, it's the, the value of that stamp as well, that, that brand name of, of MBA and ACSB. 
So it's an outstanding opportunity that you can't get certainly anywhere else in Hungary and uh, only 2% of, of institutions in the world can offer this. We're part of a network called SEMS. Those of you who are interested in our management and leadership program may know about SEMS already. In a nutshell, SEMS is a network of something like 30 to 35 institutions that have this, this double degree program. Uh, it's called the Masters in International Management. And if you study certain master's programs at Corvinus, of which the Management and Leadership program is one, you can participate in the SEMS program. And in your second year, you have a chance to go and uh, spend, spend a term at one of the SEMS partner universities. And you will see outstanding universities on that list. So for example, London School of Economics is, is one. Uh, there's Nova in, in Portugal. There's Vienna University of, of Economics. Um, Singapore, uh, National University of Singapore. Uh, so really, really world-class universities. I only have a one SEMS member for each country and Corvinus is the, is the SEMS member for Hungary. So have a look in that, into that. It's another thing that's really, really valued by employers and that you can take advantage of if you're doing a master's, if you're a Hungarian student or if you're a self-funded international student, you can benefit from depending on your program, exchanging to one of the SEMS partner schools. The university has over 120 years of history. Those in, in Hungary will know a lot about the, the transformation that the university has been through over the years. Um, my favorite kind of fun fact is that the university used to be called Karl Marx University uh, during, during communism. And now, of course, it's it's called Venus, named after a Hungarian king in what was a golden era for, for Hungary about 500 years ago. Some Hungarians might say it's uh, not such a golden era now, but um, for me as a, an international person living in Budapest, it's a, it's a brilliant place to live still. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, yeah, it's quite interesting. This um, You can see the history of the, the country uh, through the, through this university. And the, we mix old and new as well. So we have a brand new state of the art campus being built on the Buddha side of the city uh, in this uh, Gelet region. If, if anybody's in Budapest, you'll see that construction almost being finalized. I think we're starting teaching from there next week. It's going to be unlike anything else in Hungary, uh, absolute quality campus. Uh, but we also have the old, so our, our Corvinus E building, named E after economics, is a, a listed building and it's just on the fringe of a UNESCO heritage area of the city. So beautiful blend of, of old and new and uh, high tech and also established traditional history. Another point to mention, so if you're if you're a stipendium Hungaricum scholarship student, unfortunately, you cannot benefit from these exchange opportunities. You have to stay in Hungary as part of that scholarship program. But for Hungarian students and for self-funded international students, alongside that SEMS program that I've already mentioned, there's more than 200 international partners that you can engage in a study abroad opportunity with. So take advantage of that. Don't just see um, the chance to do your master's in Hungary at Corvinus. Further yourself, go and study at one of these outstanding international universities. Do what I've done, take a risk, go live in another country and learn something more about yourself and you'll, you'll find there's plenty of gains uh, from that and you'll enjoy it. Okay, I'm not going to go through all of the, the programs, but you can see here, I've focused on the English language program. So for, for Hungarian speakers, there can be different options. So there might be some programs that are not here um, and vice versa. But you can see there's about 20 programs that are available in English language in business, economics and social sciences. Some of them have that SEMS option that I've already talked about for the management and leadership program is compulsory. So you'll have to do an exchange with a SEMS partner university. Uh, there's other double degree options, which means there's also part universities you can study at and gain a degree from them during the same time that you're studying at Corvinus. And uh, we have mainly two year master's programs, but also one year master's programs. Okay. Now, very important entry requirements. That's what today's session is about. Uh, so 
we're going to tell you about the GMAT specifically to, today. But you need one of these three if you're going to be a, a master's applicant to Core Venus. So hopefully that was clear to, to everyone before joining today. If it, if it wasn't, you've heard that now. So you will need to do one of these three. I will talk to you about the very, very limited exemptions that, that apply it, but pretty much 99.9% .9 of our applicants will have to do one of these three exams. Just one of the, the three. Okay, so to be admitted to a master's program, first of all, you need an undergraduate degree. Your degree has to meet the credit requirements for the program. So I have a look into this. Uh, just excuse me one second, I need to clear my throat. That's better. Um, yeah, so for those of you from outside of Hungary, it's very important that you have bachelor's credits related to your field of study. So have a look on our website. I'm going to post the link in the in the comments section when I finish speaking, um, and then you can you can make sure that you're going to be admitted. Yeah, you can do some analysis yourself, and it is your your job to make sure that you you've got the right background for that that program you've applied or will be applying to. So you need to have one of the GMAT, NMAT, or GRE. And you need to have these minimum scores you can see here. So today we're focusing on GMAT. So uh, the GMAT classic test, as of the end of January, that has disappeared. But if you've taken the GMAT classic uh, before January 31st, 2024, uh, then you, you would need a score of 500. If you didn't do that uh, yet, then you have the option to do the GMAT FE now only. FE means focus edition and the score requirements of 485 and Sarah's from from GMAC. GMAC is the country, the, uh, the company, sorry, that's responsible for the GMAT test. Uh, she's going to give you some, some tips on how to prepare for this uh, exam today. OK, and then you get a point score in one of these international exams, and then we con convert it into an admission score out of 100. Now, this works a little bit differently for Hungarian students to international students, but eventually you all get a score out of 100. In the case of Hungarian students, there's an extra 10 points that can be added for your extracurricular uh, charity work, for example, sporting achievements. But for international students, it's a straight score out of 100 based on how you performed in these tests. So if you, if you score less than 485 in the focus edition GMAT, We'll calculate that to be less than 65%. So we have a conversion table, and you'll simply be rejected as an international student. So there's there's nothing else you can do if you score lower uh, than that. If you score what we <clears throat> deem to be above 75%, then uh, you could be admitted, but the team will set a points threshold. So it could be 75, could be 76, could be 77, et cetera. So each year for each program, the dean decides what the points threshold should be. If you score between 65 and 74% as an international student for certain programs, you might have the possibility of an interview. And if you pass the interview, you could, you could still be admitted, but it's only for selected programs. And another key point is that there's no additional English language requirements. So you don't need to do IELTS, TOEFL, TOEIC, Duolingo, et cetera. We are using your GMAT paper to evaluate your English language skills. OK, and all other documents should be uploaded to your online record. Exemptions. So as I said, this is 0.01% of people, uh, maybe more of the Hungarian applicants, particularly those who've, or people who've graduated from Core Venus in a previous year, uh, if they're international, this, this could be you. But you're only exempt from taking one of these if you've got a bachelor degree from an AACSB accredited. I mentioned AACSB earlier in that Core Venus is AACSB accredited, an Equus accredited institution or uh, an EFMD, sorry, not EFPD, it's a typo, EFMD accredited program, or an EAPAA program, and that's for public policy, that EAPAA. Now, it's very important, I'm jumping to the fourth point now, 
that your your university isn't just a member institution there's lots of member institutions but there's very few accredited institutions so make sure when you search for this you 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 can just type into google list of accredited uh, AACSB institutions and you'll see a difference between the members list and the accredited list so member institutions don't count it's much easier to get membership than it is to become an accredited institution there's a whole quality assurance process to become an accredited institution. Uh, you also need to have a grade of B, equivalent to, to B. So that's something like in Hungary, uh, we do out of five. So something like four out of five, a grade of four out of five. So if your grades, if you're a Hungarian student and your grade in your bachelor's is below four out of five, even if you attended an um, accredited institution, it's not enough. Yeah, so you, you can't be admitted, you'd still have to take the GMAT exam. For international students, we advise people to have already have graduated. So if you're finishing at Corvinus this year and you've got an average grade above B, you might think, great, it's an accredited institution. Actually, it's not enough because you won't get your final scores on time. And you know, we can't guarantee that you're, you're going to get your final average above uh, grade B. So you must still do the test if, um, if this applies to you. Okay. And just a little bit on why we're, we're asking for this. So Corvinus is now the first institution in Hungary to ask for GMAT, GRE or MMAT. Some of you might think, oh, that's, that's a bit unfair. It's a bit of a difficult requirement. Why do I have to invest my money in, in this? Well, it's a, it's a good investment for you and it's a good investment for your, your future study for your future classroom environment as well. So yes, Corvinus is the first university to introduce this in Hungary with the first this year. It's certainly a good thing. If you study at Corvinus, you'll be amongst the leading students in Hungary. There's absolutely no question. If you study business, economics or social science, there'll be no better students in Hungary uh, than Corvinus students. And Hungarian students know this because of the, the points requirements in Felby. Every year we accept the people with the highest Felby point scores. But it's also fair. So we have the same process, whether you're Hungarian, international, a bit cheesy, but from Australia all the way to Zimbabwe. I did A to Z rather than geographical spread. Uh, but it's the same for everyone. That's, that's the point. And... Another point, actually, Sarah told me, uh, suggested this point to me, and I think it's a really good one. These tests, in particular, the, the GMAT that we're talking about today, they're very, very similar to these IQ tests that the top multinational companies use in their recruitment process. So by doing the test now, you're going to gain practice for when you graduate in two years' time, maybe one year's time, and uh, it's going to help you when you're applying for top com companies in the world. Okay, and Corvinus students, this uh, second to last point, our, our graduates sorry, progressed to earn more money than any other Hungarian graduates. So uh, we've done the, the analysis and seven years after graduating, our graduates earn 60% higher. The Hungarian students will know all about the reputation that the university has. That's one of the, the reasons a degree from Corvinus really, really counts. But it's these other things I've been talking about. It's the accreditations, which means the quality of education that you get here, the recognition of those uh, accreditations as well. And a last point for the, the local students, that there is a Corvinus scholarship available to you, which is a very generous, I believe, a potentially full scholarship program. You have to select a as your funding option when you make your Felby Pontu application. Okay, this is uh, just briefly about the application process. It's a bit clustered this slide because I wanted to include all three groups here. Um, so I'm just gonna go through it quickly. For the Stipendium Hungaricum applicants, you have to already have applied. So the process for you is the top line on the screen. So you'll find out if you've been nominated by mid-March. 85% of you will not be nominated. I, I'm sorry, it's, it's just how the process works. So for the 15% of you that are lucky enough to be nominated, uh, then you have a very, very quick turnaround because by the 1st of April, you have to provide your GMAT, NMAT or GRE exam. Yeah, so it has to be provided by this date. 
You could have an interview, as I discussed earlier, as people between 65 and 74 percent in selected programs. Then uh, for those of you who are past the points threshold set by the dean, you can be accepted. If you provided all other documentation, you've met the credit requirements, you'll be unconditionally accepted. Um, and then approximately around half of the people that are accepted get, get a scholarship. It's quite competitive to get this stipendium Hungarian scholarship. It's really important that you provide all your documents as quickly as possible so you can start the visa application process as soon as, as um, we award you the unconditional acceptance letter and you get the letter awarded the scholarship. Self-funded applicants, you still have until international self-funded, you still have until 30th of April to apply and you should use the Dream Apply system. And you also have until 30th of April to provide your GMAT, NMAT or GRE. And the process is very similar uh, from there onwards apart from you should also pay your semester one tuition fee. And if you don't pay that fee, you can't be unconditionally accepted. So you should pay after you've been conditionally accepted. And the last group is the Hungarian students. So your application portal is Felvi Pontu. I, I know that you all know that the deadline is, is 15th of February. If you need to do an interview, it's going to be by 31st of May. And you're lucky you have more time to do the GMAT, NMAT or the GRE. You have until 10th of July. And uh, finally, you'll find out by 24th of July what your, your final point score is and if you've got a place at Corvinus. So a few tips here. Give yourself at least six weeks. Let, let's see what Sarah says. She might have some more specific advice than this, but I say at least six weeks. Um, and make sure you book the test at least two weeks before. So don't book the test on the 30th of April if you're a self-funded applicant. Book it before the, the 15th of April to make sure that you can get your results to us on time. Uh, you might want to even book much, much earlier so you have the chance to reset if you're not above the minimum scores or you don't have a particularly good score. Uh, so take account of the, the scores that I shared earlier. Okay, um, that is all from me. Sorry that we've run a bit over. I don't think there was any information I could cut. I've spoken quite fast, um, but it's over now to you, Sarah. So, Sarah, please take your time, and uh, then we'll we'll be back together to answer questions at the end. Thanks. Thank you, Matt. Uh, thank you, uh, Anna, for uh, inviting me to to speak to your uh, prospective students and uh, hi uh, to to everyone who has uh, who is here on online with, with us. Uh, uh, just a quick uh, introduction about uh, uh, me, if you've uh, joined uh, uh, the uh, webinar a little bit later. Uh, my name is Sara Strafino. I'm a director of market development for uh, GMAC uh, Europe. I'm uh, based uh, in, in London, where the uh, GMAC uh, Europe uh, team is. And I have... Um, a lot of uh, experience uh, in advising students uh, and uh, schools on uh, uh, admissions related topics. Uh, a few years ago, I was actually director of uh, admissions uh, uh, myself, uh, sitting, you know, in uh, uh, kinds of, you know, maths uh, uh, shoes uh, uh, in, in some institutions in, uh, in the UK. Uh, and the, just uh, a few words about GMAC, uh, Graduate Management Admission Council. We are uh, an association of uh, uh, business schools from uh, around the, the world. Uh, we are also the, the maker of uh, the GMAT exam, the NMAT exam that Matt mentioned. We are a research uh, uh, institute. Uh, you can... Uh, see our vision and mission uh, uh, statements on the slide uh, to explain it in a few words. We uh, work to, to ensure that uh, uh, prospective students uh, like you uh, have the opportunity to, to meet quality uh, schools uh, like Corvinus to fulfill their purpose in life. We want to promote leadership because we think that you know, leadership uh, is a force of good uh, and the, the schools such as Corvinus uh, will develop uh, the leaders that are in, uh, in you. 
Um, so what I'm going uh, to, to do uh, for uh, uh, the next uh, 20, 25 minutes is to give you an overview of uh, uh, the GMAT uh, uh, exam. As uh, uh, Matt uh, said uh, today, uh, the uh, GMAT uh, exam is available now in the focus format. Uh, till a few days ago, there were in two, two formats of the exam uh, going on. So if you have already taken uh, the, the GMAT before the session of today, um, you now know that there is uh, only uh, one format of the exam. And of, for those of you uh, that uh, haven't heard about uh, the GMAT at all before joining this session, and don't worry you know, if you haven't, I hope that by the end of the 20, 25 minutes that we have uh, together, you have all the key uh, pieces of information uh, to, to get started. Uh, please uh, use uh, the, the chat to answer, uh, to ask your questions as we go along, and we will try to, to answer them at the end. We will, I'll provide an overview of uh, the exam and also uh, some information about uh, the scores and some uh, uh, tips uh, around the uh, preparation. So uh, GMAT, Graduate Management Admissions Test, uh, it is uh, a standardized exam uh, that measures critical reasoning uh, skills. And uh, no matter where you are uh, around the world, uh, from Australia to Zimbabwe, as uh, Matt was saying earlier, uh, the GMAT uh, exam is administered absolutely in the same uh, way. And this is why uh, schools from all over the world uh, use the GMAT to uh, assess and uh, uh, predict academic potential of candidates that apply for their uh, programs. If um, you were able to put yourselves uh, in uh, um, Matt's shoes, uh, when you have uh, candidates that come from different uh, um, countries, education systems, they have uh, studies different subjects, then you need a common benchmark to ensure that you are fair, to ensure that everybody that you put through uh, the classes of a similar caliber. So it really helps uh, compare uh, across different experiences and uh, uh, walk of life. For the schools, it also gives uh, an indication of commitment and uh, ambition to succeed, uh, not only in, uh, in the programs, but also you know, later on in, in your careers. But you would say, okay, you know, this is for the schools, so what uh, is in, in this for me? It helps you stand out uh, from uh, a candidates so that apply for competitive and popular programs. It is also a way to compensate for uh, other areas. So for example, if you know you haven't been uh, uh, particularly successful during your academic studies, during your bachelor or undergraduate degrees, you have one more thing that helps you prove that you have uh, nothing less than some other candidates that perhaps achieved the, the top grades. It uh, opens the, the doors for uh, schools, you know, programs, MBA, uh, masters uh, in management, finance, accounting, and so forth. They use the GMAT, opens the door for scholarships, as Matt was saying earlier. But also, there are some uh, um, employers in the multinational uh, and corporate world that are really familiar with the GMAT and with what uh, it means in terms of assessing critical reasoning skills. So if, for example, you, know, you are uh, thinking of working in uh, management consulting, in financial services, investment uh, uh, banking, or you know, some of the tech companies, they are very data-driven. Uh, they would be familiar with the GMAT exam. Um, last but not least, uh, it helps you prepare for uh, uh, business schools because with the GMAT, you are uh, using uh, those skills uh, that will make you uh, successful uh, whilst you are on the program. One thing to say is that the GMAT uh, is uh, not used on uh, its uh, own. It's always one uh, element of uh, uh, the application. And during the application and uh, the admissions process, Corvinus will look at other skills and attributes uh, that you bring. So the GMAT is 
looked at together with your uh, academic grades uh, to give them a sense of how you will perform in the class. But then uh, there are other uh, skills, uh, other attributes that they uh, will uh, look uh, whilst they go through uh, the uh, application. Let's uh, have uh, a look at uh, what uh, the, the GMAT uh, uh, measures. GMAT uh, focus edition, this is what uh, I'm uh, showing on the screen, and this is the only format of the exam that you will find. So it's, uh, uh, the GMAT is a test of critical reasoning skills. It's uh, a test of uh, logic in different areas. This is different from uh, some test of knowledge uh, that you may have uh, be uh, familiar with from your education um, system, perhaps. Uh, the GMAT doesn't imply any knowledge on uh, any subjects. Anybody from any uh, degree uh, subject or from any background can do well at uh, uh, the GMAT. Uh, it's critical reasoning uh, in the three different uh, areas quantitative reasoning, verbal reasoning, and data insights that correspond to the three uh, different uh, parts of uh, the exam. The exam lasts two hours and 15 minutes uh, overall, including the breaks. Each part is 45 uh, uh, minutes uh, each. And you can see the quantitative uh, reasoning includes uh, 21 questions, verbal reasoning, 23 questions and data insights, 20 uh, questions. Quantitative reasoning, as the name suggests, is uh, based on uh, uh, quantitative uh, uh, problems, problem solving skills. Um, these are multiple uh, choice uh, based questions where you have a question and five uh, uh, possible uh, uh, answers. Um, you will be using uh, maths, uh, algebra that you would have studied at high school. So it's not complex maths, it's the way uh, perhaps the questions are asked that is challenging your critical reasoning skills, is challenging your logic. Then we have the verbal reasoning uh, part. Again, 45 minutes, as I said earlier, there are critical reasoning, reading comprehension uh, questions. You have a text and then you have some questions that refer to uh, the text. Uh, again, uh, multiple choice uh, based uh, questions. Then you have uh, uh, data insights. These are a little bit different. Uh, these are questions where you have in front of you uh, tables, graphs, uh, text, uh, it's data analytics type of questions where you have a lot of information you need to, to grasp what is relevant to answer the, the question. Sometimes the information is in a drop uh, down uh, uh, boxes so you need to reorder uh, a table. So there are three different type of, uh, of questions that come into this uh, part. For each uh, part of uh, the exam, for each of this uh, section, you receive a score. And then there is a total score that is based on um, how you have uh, uh, performed, how you have uh, scored in uh, the three different uh, uh, sections. The exam is computer adaptive. Computer adaptive uh, means uh, that uh, it gives you questions based on uh, uh, the previous answer to uh, the uh, other question and it adjusts to your uh, uh, ability level. If you answer a question correctly, uh, you receive a more difficult question. If you answer incorrectly, you receive an easier question. So the score depends not only on the, uh, the number of questions so that you answer correctly, but also on the difficulty level. Exams, um, and I can answer some of the questions that I see there in the chat. Uh, exams are available all year round. Uh, so this is, is not one of those exams that you can only uh, take, you know, in a particular periods in the year. It's available of all year round, and you can take it in test centers all over uh, the, the world. If you have um, a test center uh, near, near you, or you can take it online from uh, the comfort of uh, your home. Availability is around the clock for the online exam. Uh, test centers is usually during test uh, center operating hours, which tend to be office uh, hours. 
Um, in terms of uh, the fees, the fees uh, depend uh, on uh, whether you take uh, the uh, exam uh, online or in a test center and also depends on uh, the location. It's around the 285, 300 uh, dollars uh, mark. mark. Um, the, the question uh, uh, is uh, question adaptive. So this is the test design, which I explained earlier. You have uh, a 10 minute break. You can move uh, through uh, the sections in any uh, way uh, you, you like. And then I will uh, go through some of the uh, features, uh, test uh, friendly, uh, test taker friendly features later. Score uh, uh, reports. You have uh, five uh, free score uh, uh, reports that you can send to programs of your choice. Uh, within uh, uh, 48 hours of receiving uh, your uh, uh, official score. And you will receive your of, um, provisional score on the screen as soon as you complete the test. You can't take screenshots, you can't take pictures because that would alert our security mechanism. But you will uh, uh, receive uh, the official score report usually around one week uh, from taking the exam, sometimes it can take up to 10, 20, uh, 20 days, but it's usually one week uh, from uh, taking uh, the exam. In terms of um, attempts, you have uh, five uh, uh, attempts uh, across the online or the test center uh, channels within any 12-month period, and you can take it no more than eight times in your uh, life uh, time. Uh, but in mind, uh, for each um, attempt, there is a test uh, fee, an exam fee to pay. So I really encourage you uh, to prepare carefully because, you know, retaking the exam is certainly a possibility if you haven't uh, achieved your uh, target score the first time. But definitely, you know, the preparation will help you uh, towards achieving uh, uh, that uh, score, the target score, if you pay attention if you focus on your preparations. I mentioned earlier the test taker friendly features and these, you know, many of these have actually been introduced with the new format of the exam, which is the format in which you will take uh, the exam now. So when you go uh, through the questions in the, of the different sections, you can uh, mark uh, as many as you like uh, for a review, if you are not 100% uh, sure you know, that you provided the correct answer. And then you can change up to three uh, of those answers per uh, uh, section. I've mentioned already that you can move uh, through the different sections in any way you like. You can start from the quantitative or from the verbal and then move uh, to, to the next. Uh, the, the choice of you know, how you move through the exam will depend on, on you, on what you are comfortable with. And it's the practice, you know, the preparation that will give uh, that sense you know, of what uh, you may want to do when uh, uh, you, you are taking the exam, how you want to work through the, the sections. We have uh, um, improved uh, uh, the GMAT focus edition exam by uh, providing a lot of uh, uh, information with the score report. So we show you how you, you've done in each uh, section, how uh, you have uh, performed in terms of time management, how you, you uh, answered, how many questions correct uh, or incorrectly uh, did you get. So if you wanted to retake the exam, this would be valuable uh, information. Um, then uh, in, we have uh, made the score sending very easy. So you receive your official score report and then you can uh, uh, send up to five uh, uh, scores included in the program uh, fee. Um, you can uh, um, send more than, than five. There is an admin fee, but hopefully, you know, five uh, uh, scores is uh, plenty. And if you want to apply to more than one program to uh, Corvinus, for example, you can only, you can let Matt know that you have uh, already sent, you know, your uh, score to a particular program and Matt will be able to, uh, to find it. Accommodations. 
Uh, this is a provision for uh, uh, students who may have uh, um, access needs and disabilities. Uh, this uh, is provided for the GMAT focus exam. My recommendation is, uh, you know, please uh, uh, apply for accommodations as soon as possible. It takes uh, around four or four weeks uh, for us to exam examine the medical uh, evidence and arrange accommodation. So um, as soon as uh, possible, please um, apply for this, uh, familiarize with the, with the form. It's an easy form that can be accessed through uh, our uh, site. Uh, a practical uh, uh, thing, uh, during uh, uh, the online exam, if you decided to, to take uh, the GMAT uh, online, you have uh, uh, two options. Uh, you have uh, the option to um, get yourself a physical whiteboard, and uh, I'm uh, copying and pasting here some of the specs uh, on, uh, on the physical whiteboard. And this is the solution that I uh, recommend, I suggest that you um, get the physical uh, whiteboard for your preparation. So you, you kind of, you know, you practice uh, doing your notes in this, uh, uh, with, with this tool. There is also an online whiteboard uh, that is provided, is in, built in the uh, software that you, you use for the online exam, is also in, uh, you, available through the prep tools that we provide. Uh, I don't particularly recommend the online whiteboard. As I said, I recommend that you get yourself a physical whiteboard if you're doing the online exam. But if you decided to go for the online uh, whiteboard, please ensure that, again, you know, you, you practice using it because it takes uh, a little time to just uh, get used to, to write your, uh, your notes uh, on uh, an online whiteboard. If you are doing uh, the exam uh, in uh, a test center, you don't need to, to worry at all about this because the test center will provide you with uh, an A4 type of uh, plastified sheet where you can take your notes, um, but you will need to, to, give, to leave this behind as you leave uh, the, the test center. Now, um, a little bit of information about uh, the GMAT uh, focus uh, score. Uh, the, the GMAT used to have a different score uh, scale. Uh, now, the GMAT focus scores will be between 205 and 805 in increment of uh, 10. And then the section scores will be between 60 and 90 with the increment of uh, 1. Uh, if you took uh, uh, the earlier version of the GMAT, the score scale was between 200 and 800. But with the new uh, focus uh, scale, it's not just about you know, changing the, the five at the end of, of the score. We have uh, changed and we have recalibrated the, the, the score uh, uh, scale. So now if um, you have uh, um, you know, a GMAT uh, focus exam, the purple line of uh, 605, uh, in the previous version of the exam, when I uh, run you know, the percentile uh, line here, uh, they would correspond uh, or would be comparable to a, a previous GMAT score of 640. We uh, look at percentiles. The percentiles are uh, a way to compare how a um, certain candidate uh, performed against the pool of uh, uh, candidates that apply, that took the, the GMAT over a period of, uh, of time. So if uh, you are uh, in the 72nd uh, percentile, um, it's like, you know, in this uh, graph, it means that you were, um, you know, in the top 28% of the, the test takers over a period of time. So 72% per, uh, percent of the test uh, takers that took uh, the GMAT uh, over a period of, of time uh, perform uh, uh, lower uh, than, uh, than you. So this is the way uh, in, in which um, schools will look at uh, the tables that we have uh, published uh, to compare 
uh, scores uh, in uh, the GMOT focus format to the previous format. And those tables are available for you as well on the gmat.com uh, uh, website. And I, I won't go through uh, the percentile rankings in uh, too much of uh, detail, but again, uh, these tables are available on, um, on the website so you can uh, see and uh, you know, understand the white, uh, whilst MAT is, uh, is using uh, a certain um, requirement for the GMAT uh, focus and uh, the previous version of, uh, of the exam. Preparation. I will spend uh, uh, the next uh, few, uh, few minutes uh, over you know, talking about the preparation. You have uh, a lot of uh, preparation resources through our site, mba.com or gmat.com. Uh, you know, if you can't remember uh, anything uh, about today, just remember gmat.com. You will find all the information there. We have uh, free uh, preparation resources and study materials, including a six-week study guide that will uh, help you organize your, uh, uh, your time. If you are a student, you know, you are fresh of studies, a six a week uh, is a good uh, benchmark in terms of time uh, to consider uh, to invest in your preparation. You have uh, a free official starter kit uh, for, uh, for the GMAT. It uh, will give you a sample questions, uh, will give you tips uh, on, uh, on the exam. And then we give you two uh, mock exams for free. They use the same uh, algorithm of the exam. You can take them on the screen uh, so you can uh, get uh, the exam uh, experience through uh, the, the free mock exams. Then we have uh, official preparation materials that you can uh, uh, purchase uh, from uh, our uh, site in um, the uh, online uh, format. There are uh, the official guide is also available as a physical books. Uh, Usually, uh, major business uh, retailers, both online and uh, uh, bookstores, uh, uh, stock uh, the GMAT preparation materials. Uh, and they have uh, questions and uh, uh, question answers for each of uh, the different uh, sections of the exams. The six-week study guides will take you through a timeline, you know, how you can use uh, the different uh, preparation resources in those six weeks to help you uh, prepare for, uh, uh, for the exam. And this is an example of what the uh, six week study uh, planner uh, looks uh, like. So it will help you uh, understand the uh, exam, inform your practice, and then track uh, your, uh, uh, your progress. Some uh, tips uh, from, from me as uh, you are starting to uh, think and prepare for the exam. Preparation and focus, <laughs> and it's not uh, the, the focus of the exam, is your focus in preparation are the, the key uh, to be successful and to achieve uh, your target score. Uh, you will obtain a score uh, no matter how you uh, perform uh, in, in the GMAT. It's just uh, you know, whether it's or not your, your target uh, score. The, when you have a study plan, uh, develop it, you know, work on the study plan, uh, see how it fits around your other study and uh, your uh, work uh, commitments. Once you have uh, developed your study plan, uh, stick to it. Um, your uh, focus, your consistency, your discipline will be absolutely crucial. Uh, if uh, you start uh, and then you stop and then you go back, hiccup preparations will not enable you to achieve the best results. So once you've given yourself uh, you know, a plan, just trying to, to be uh, consistent. It doesn't matter if you, know, you can... Uh, uh, study a little bit uh, in, in the evening, a little bit in the morning or at weekends, uh, try the, the ways and the formats that works best with you, but be consistent. Simulate the testing conditions, use the uh, practice exams, the two mock exams that uh, we, we give you. You will probably, you know, some of you, if uh, 
um, they feel more if you feel more comfortable in studying on a book you know do that you know there are physical books uh, that you can get but then when uh, you uh, take the exam uh, please practice it on the screen because it's uh, uh, a screen based exam there is no uh, pen uh, and paper plan the logistics also ahead of the exam day if you are taking it in a test center you will arrive there 30 minutes before because they, there is a security process they go through to check your id and and so forth if you are taking the exam online then i would say you need to prepare even beforehand uh, because there are some things that you need to check to ensure that your computer is equipped with everything that you need to to go through the exam you also need to check the rules of the exam because you're taking the exam in your home so you need to, to make sure that you comply uh, with the uh, security around you know the the room in which you you are taking the exam for example in the lead up of the exam uh, Give uh, yourself uh, plenty of rest. Uh, try uh, to keep your uh, uh, your mind uh, fresh. When you are uh, in uh, um, uh, the exam uh, day, uh, read the questions very uh, carefully. Try to you know eliminate your wrong answers. If you've done your practice well, you will um, learn how to move through the question quickly how to identify uh, those questions that you know may be completely uh, wrong and then you will select your uh, best choice don't uh, get stuck on uh, a question give your answer try to keep moving because you need to move uh, through different sets of questions you need to complete the exam because there are you know penalties if you don't uh, complete all the questions in uh, uh, the exam so in that sense you know the next point is just better to guess your questions than uh, omit and uh, finally keep uh, uh, your uh, eye on uh, on the time and that's why the preparation is again important because with the preparation you will learn how to pace um, yourself so this uh, was the last uh, uh, slide i uh, have um, a discount code which i will distribute uh, matt will uh, will share with the, you that the deck uh, the deck after uh, the, the session um, so this is uh, the end of my slides hi matt hi thank you very much sarah Anna's back as well. Hi, Anna. Yes, thank you very much for a wonderful presentation. Now we have around 10, 13 minutes for the Q&A session. Um, and I see a lot of questions in the chat. I think we will go run through them. Um, I'm not sure. Oh, OK, I'll just pick one. Um, yeah, if you read, Anna, and then between Sarah yeah. and I, we'll see who's best equipped to answer. For example, this one. Uh, can we know the threshold beforehand anywhere on the website for specific programs? That's a question for me. So the answer is no. Uh, the Dean will set the threshold uh, based on uh, how many people we can accept. What I can say is you need to be scoring above 75% for sure. So if you remember, six, below 65 is an automatic rejection between 65 and 74%. For certain programs, you can have an interview, but you need to be 75, 80, even higher than that. If you're a Stipendium Hungaricum applicant, at the very end of the process, there's the scholarship awards. And it's hard to know exactly how scholarships are awarded, but we believe the higher uh, score you get in your admission process, the better chance you have of getting a scholarship. So you need to be looking not just to score 485, the minimum requirement in the GMAT, focus edition. You need to be getting way into the 500s for this and getting as high admission score as possible. I hope that's a, a good answer and it's it's helpful to, to you, Aleba, and to everyone else. Okay, the next one, Jofria is asking, if the diploma grade is between four and five for Hungarian students, it can serve as an exemption from taking the test. That if you went to Corvinus, so remember it has to be uh, four plus or a grade of B plus. So yes, four is is B. Um, but I don't know if you study at Corvinus, Sophie, or you studied somewhere else. 
uh, but it needs to be an accredited institution. So if you remember, is the AACSB accredited, Equis accredited, EFMD accredited program. There are a few other EFMD accredited programs in Hungary. I think there's two other uh, as well as Corvinus. So have a look and make sure that you're accredited. It's uh, it's on the slides. Rewatch the first 10 minutes of the webinar and you'll, you'll see uh, what the exemptions are. Okay, I think the next one is also for you, Matt. Our school follows American GPA system. Will the school be able to calculate this automatically? Yeah, so if you're, it's an American school, there's a good chance that it is AACSB accredited. Uh, so yeah, I would say yes. Probably due to what you need is a score of 80. If it's out of 100, it could be an 80% or a four out of five, as we said. Yeah, um, or they might even have a an alphabet system, I can't think of the right word, a, a grade system with a letter. I think that's what I wanted to say. Um, so you might even get a B. Do you, do you want to add anything, Sarah? You, if you've uh, got any knowledge of the US <laughs> system? Yeah, no, it's, uh, as, I said, as you said, you know, I'm, I'm sure that uh, the uh, American GPA system is one of uh, the most uh, well uh, well known um so you know it doesn't uh undermine uh, uh students uh, at all and uh, in in admissions anyway you know we are familiar with the different uh, gpa and different uh, education systems so it shouldn't uh, be a, a concern yeah right should we go to the next one yeah let's do it perfect uh, when will the exam take place for international scholarship students? What are the necessary things to do? I think here, if we can maybe summarize what are the next steps that an international student who has applied to Corvinus should do, maybe that would be nice. I, I assume that's what the person is asking here. Okay. If they've asked this and you've asked this, Anna, then we'll answer it this way. <laughs> uh, so it was on the slides. So there's two different international pathways, if you remember, Patrick. So one is for the Stipendium Hungaricum, one is for the self-funded. If you're Stipendium Hungaricum, you need to be nominated, first of all. So if, if you're not nominated, the process ends. If you are nominated, <clears throat> if you remember, so you, you have to take this exam in your own volition. Uh, Sarah's talked about when and how you can take the exam. From our point of view, if you're Stipendium Hungaricum, you have to be able to give a result before the 1st of April. Okay, so it's very important. Sarah said it can take up to 20 days, worst case scenario, for you to get the results. So that means that you should be, by early March, you should have taken the exam, really. So it's, it's time to start preparing now, if you're a stipendium Hungarian student. If you're a self-funded applicant, you have more time. So you have until the 30th of April to provide the, the uh, results. So that means by 10th of April, you should have taken the test okay so the when is is up to you is is when you're ready but if you don't provide us with test results before those deadlines you can't have an admission score you can't be admitted so i hope that's that's clear Anna, did that answer the question as you wanted me to i i don't want to go into the kind of next parts of the process because i i did cover it briefly on the slides all right but, uh, i would say matt uh, you know if um they they are uh, uh, planning to take the GMAT, then I would encourage them to to start uh, from today, from tomorrow. Just get yourself uh, the the materials. I'll uh, send uh, a, a short uh, a questionnaire. So you know, if um, they answer, then you know we we can uh, send all the the, the links uh, and all the the, the information. Also uh, to all the students, because I work with the students all the time. I know that you know now if you are hearing for, about this for the first time, it may feel a little bit daunting because you know you you don't know what it is, what it feels like. Please just uh, take it very positive as a positive challenge because this will uh, really be helpful. And uh, you are uh, fresh of studies, so this is. Another exam, I'm sure you have done, you know, a lot of uh, exams. All exams uh, work in different ways. Maybe this is, you know, something new that you haven't uh, done uh, uh, before. Uh, just uh, take it uh, in, in a positive way because it will uh, really, you know, help you. You will need to revise some of the concepts. I said, you know, high school uh, uh, based maths. 
they will uh, be helpful for uh, anything that, that you do because nowadays we we work with data i mean even in my job you know a day-to-day job i i work with uh, data with cons all the time i had uh, to to revise uh, some of uh, uh, of the things that i had uh, you know forgotten just because uh, we, we are a gmac we are also a data driven organization so when i started for example i i heard about you know a mean average and and this and that but if you took uh, this challenge in a positive way it will really help you not just for the admissions to to convenience uh, also later but the key thing is start uh, as soon as possible so from tonight you know just have a look uh, at what you need to do give yourself uh, some uh, uh, objectives work consistently as i said towards that and you'll be fine it's not uh, unusual for me to hear that students who are fresh of study uh, prepare it in four or five weeks and you know they are uh, able to to achieve the the goal uh, in terms of score what what they need yeah i just want to pick up on one thing that sarah reminded me of so you do you should start as soon as possible i agree with that so if you're a stipendium hungaricum or an international scholarship applicant you can't wait for that nomination process you can't wait to find out you've been nominated to start revising because you won't find out until march and as we've said by the first of april you need to provide a test score so if it's first of march that you get nominated you give yourself 10 days to prepare and we've already told you that you need six so really guys it is time to start i like sarah's positive message i'm a, a little bit firmer because these these entry requirements have been on the the website on the stipendium hungaricum website so nobody should have been blindsided by this um it's important now to start preparing if it is new news for for you um well for everyone is it's important to start preparing anna back to All you right. Yes, uh, for Stipendium Hungaricum applicants, where do we submit the GMAT score? Do we just need to submit it in our online application document section? If it's not clear, so if there's not a task, that's what um, Dream Apply, which is the system, uh, normally calls the document upload section tasks. So if there's not one that says GMAT, GRE, or NMAT, then you cannot upload it in a general academic section. Yes, to, to the application. Uh, so that's that's absolutely fine. Uh, we'll be checking. We'll be verifying all the scores. So uh, Sarah's organisation, GMAC, also give us uh, access to the back end system where we can see and verify everyone's scores. So all you need to do is yes, upload it to the most logical place. Uh, you should know that you'll know it better than me because you'll be able to log in and see how the system looks and uh, we'll check it from our side. And that's, that's all you need to do, Maria. Thank you. Thank you. I think we have time for one more question. Do all three exams, NMAT, GRE, GMAT, have the same value when evaluating an applicant? It's an interesting question. I'll, I'll start with my answer and then Sarah can add hers. Well, specifically, she'll be able to tell, maybe to tell you about the GMAT and the NMAT because they're both GMAT tests. Um, one thing I would say is that the NMAT is the cheapest. Yeah, so this is something to, to keep in mind. Uh, but the NMAT has also been designed in South Asia initially. So you might see, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. You might see some more Asia specific examples. So you might see the rupee being used as a currency rather than the euro or the US dollar. So this is, is something to keep in mind. Um, but if you refer back to the slides, uh, you'll see the point scores. And Sarah talked about different percentiles. So we've calculated our NMAT requirement and our GMAT requirement to be around the same level, which is actually around the 25th percentile. So it's quite it's quite easy, actually, the, the requirement for Corvinus that you'll find compared to, to other business schools. Uh, it's our first year bringing it in, so we didn't want to set it at such a high level. So the point requirement for the NMAT and the GMAT should be around the same level. Um, and you get that converted into your admissions point score. So you should go for the test that you're most comfortable with, that you have most confidence in. But the yeah, MAT is the cheapest. Uh, Sarah, what would you like to add to this? Yeah, uh, you know, we worked to, to, together towards the uh, application requirements for any or uh, the, the other tests. So, of course, uh, 
they have the uh, opportunity to, to choose one or uh, the other. As you said, in terms of uh, cost, uh, the NMAT is uh, the, the one that, uh, you know, is, is more uh, accessible. So I think it's uh, around the $65, uh, uh, if I'm not wrong. And we have another webinar uh, on uh, the NMAT uh, uh, specifically. Uh, GMAT uh, uh, is uh, more costly, is probably the most, you know, well-known brand if you are, you know, in business uh, and management uh, uh, courses and uh, is available both test center and online. At the NMAT, um, you will take it uh, online. So it is uh, a choice of, you know, convenience and, and comfort as well. You know, have a look because all these tests and I add the GRE uh, too, for which I'm not responsible. You know, they have, uh, uh, they assess uh, similar skills, but they uh, assess them in different ways. You know, the questions uh, may uh, look slightly different. So have a look and see what uh, you feel more comfortable with. I'd like to add something that is not, uh, you know, related to this question, but to some others that I've uh, seen, uh, you know, in the chat. Uh, so I'm studying media and uh, communication or media and research. I've done politics, you know, maths. How is that relevant to me? So I'm, um, let's say, you know, just to take it as the advice of more uh, uh, a coach or a mother, if you, if you like, because I'm a little bit uh, older than you. I also studied the politics. I had uh, the fortune, actually, in in my uh, in the studies, though I had uh, some uh, uh, statistics and some other maths modules, which uh, were you know they, it was luck, lucky for for me at the time, and I didn't realize that because. Uh, for uh, the way the world of work is today, if you think that you know you are able to do any jobs without using uh, data and without using maths, I think you have a very unrealistic uh, vision of what the world of work is today. And I give the example: you know, if you do media and communication, you do marketing, you will have a lot of data, for example, what people react to, what they are looking at, when, uh, and so forth. So anything that you will end up uh, doing in your careers, there will still be uh, data. Uh, and in that sense, you know, what you do through the preparation uh, for, for these tests will also be helpful for uh, anything you will end up doing after your uh, your masters. All right, perfect. And one very last question uh, from Adam. You previously mentioned that Corvinus will organize a preparatory course too during the application process. Do you have any further information about this opportunity? I know that it's, it's happening, Adam. I believe that it's going to happen on site. So everybody who's in, in Budapest can take advantage of, of this, international students who live in Budapest. I don't know the exact dates yet, but I think it could be this month, could be could be next month. All I can say for the moment is keep an eye on the website. So there will be Prep3 uh, course. I think, Adam, it's, it's just going to be for the NMAT, actually. So it will be a focus on the NMAT rather than the GMAT that we've discussed today. Uh, Anna, can I just have two comments if that's the last question? Yes, if that's all right. Yeah, so I wanted to remind everyone, because Sarah's already said, that on Thursday we'll have the same session like this for the NMAT. So it's at 12 p.m. Uh, Budapest time. So do come along to that, and then you, it can help you to, to decide which one's going to be the right option for you. I think Sarah's given really good advice as to how you can you can choose uh, which one might might be right. Uh, the other thing I just wanted to add, because I looked through the, the comments again quickly, uh, quite a few of you are worried about calculating your grades to be a B. Now, this is a moot point if it's not an accredited institution. So just remember, it has to be, you have to be an AACSB, Equis accredited institution or an EFMD accredited program. Otherwise, calculating your grades to be a B is, is not relevant. You still have to take the the GMAT, the MAT, or, or the GRE. So please remember that and remember the point we made about accredited institutions versus member institutions. And majority of you uh, will not be exempt from taking the test. You'll, you'll have to do one of these three options. 
Okay, uh, that's all I wanted to say. I just wanted to reiterate that point. And the um, very last comment from me, uh, Matt, uh, for those of you who are, who are not able to take a preparation course, uh, please, you know, don't think uh, this is not the only way to do the, the GMAT or to prepare for, for the GMAT. All the resources uh, that are shown on my slide are actually designed for self-studies. Uh, uh, so you can absolutely do this uh, by, uh, by yourself. Uh, it's also a good idea if you have uh, friends, they are preparing for this another way could be, you know, you still study individually and then you meet each other and you help through the questions that you don't understand, you uh, struggle with, regardless of whether you will have, you will prepare with, if you prepare with the study uh, course or, you know, by yourself, you will still have to study on your own, you know, at, at times. So the individual study is always there, no matter, you know, if you prepare through a course or without a course. All right. Um, on this note, I think we will finish our webinar. Thank you very much, Sarah. Thank you, Matt, for your wonderful presentations. Uh, this recording will be saved on YouTube and Facebook. So if anyone wants to come back and rewatch it, for example, I saw the question about the QR code, you can come back to the uh, recording on YouTube and uh, scan it once again. Uh, just a simple note that uh, if you want to be updated on everything regarding the application process and these um, exams, follow Corvinus on every social media channel possible, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, everywhere, and you will be uh, updated on everything you need to know to successfully take and complete these tests. Yes, thank you everyone once again and have a good rest of the day. Thank you.